Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome to another video. And as always, before we get started today, I'd just like to take a quick moment to welcome all my new subscribers and to thank everybody who's been leaving me comments down below. Guys, thank you very much. And I've been reading as many of them as I can. And there have been some really, really good suggestions in the comments for future video ideas. So stay tuned for that. And before we get started, as always, everybody, please hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel. It really, really helps a lot, guys. And hey, thank you all very much. Okay, let's get into today's topic. If I were to ask all of you what you thought one of the worst shipwrecks in the history of mankind was, what would you say? Would you say the Titanic? How about the sinking of the Lusitania? The Empress of Ireland? The RMS Atlantic? What about the Halifax explosion? This was the biggest explosion done by man before the dropping of the atomic bomb in World War II. If you added up how many people lost their lives and all of those disasters combined, you would reach a total of 6,247 people died in all of those tragedies. However, what if I was to tell you that there was one shipwreck that has been largely forgotten by history? And on this one shipwreck, more people lost their lives than on all of those disasters combined. On this one shipwreck, a grand total of around 9,400 people lost their lives on one shipwreck. And that is the story of today's video. The vessel that I'm referring to would be this ship right here, the Wilhelm Gusloff, built in 1937 by the German slash Nazi party. It was a vessel designed to offer cheap, affordable vacations to the German people in the 1930s and 40s. During its time operating as a cruise ship, because you got to remember when the Wilhelm Gustloff was built, this was before the outbreak of World War II, it was very, very popular as a civilian vessel operating cheap cruises to German families. However, we're not here to talk about that. We're going to talk about what happened to the Wilhelm Gustloff during World War II to make it the site of one of the worst maritime disasters in history. The story of the Wilhelm Gustloff's last voyage begins in 1945 as the German army was in full retreat in Poland from the advancing Russian Red Army. The Wilhelm Gustloff was being prepped and ready to be used as a civilian evacuation ship in order to save German refugees from the advancing Red Army. One of the big buildups that led to the horrible disaster of the Wilhelm Gustloff were these stories that were circulating around by atrocities that were being committed by the Russian Red Army as they were coming in. You see, it appeared that there were no, they weren't discriminating between German slash Nazi soldiers and people who had nothing to do with it. There were stories of Russian soldiers, you know, beating and raping women, hurting innocent people that had nothing to do with the German Nazi regime. As far as they were concerned, they were embarrassed of what the Germans did to them during World War II. So when they finally got the counteroffensive and were pushing into Poland and pushing Germany back, they weren't discriminating. They were in, they were enacting full on revenge. And regardless if these stories are exaggerated or not, the Nazi regime was also pushing these stories into their innocent people, their civilian population. So in the ports where the Wilhelm Gustloff was being prepped and ready to go, there were thousands and thousands of refugees trying to get out of Poland before the Red Army caught up with them. The operation to save all these refugees would be called Operation Hannibal, and it would involve the Wilhelm Gustloff and other ships that were in the area to evacuate German refugees from a town in Poland called Gdynia to the German city of Kiel. At this time, the Russians had already cut all the roads and railroads and stuff leading from Poland into Germany, and the only way out was through the Baltic Sea by ship. This map is a good analogy of the route that the Gustloff was going to try to take with the German refugees. It was going to leave the Poland town of Gdynia, seen on the right, and drop them off in the German city of Kiel, as visible on the left. This route would take them through the Baltic Sea and cross over from Poland into Germany. One big thing you need to understand in order to try to comprehend why so many people died when the Gustloff sank was how many people were on board the Gustloff when it went down. Just to give you a little bit of context here, the Gustloff was designed to have 2,000 people on board. So that equates to about 1,500 passengers, about 500 crew members. So 2,000 people, more or less. When the Gustloff went down, there was over 10,000 people on board. Some counts say it was around 10,400, 10,500. Just let that number sink in. That many people on a ship designed for 2,000. Now, the Germans didn't do this intentionally. They tried to sell tickets and control the flow of people that were on board the ship. However, there were so many refugees and so many people trying to get past the soldiers in order to get on the ship to escape the Red Army that they couldn't keep up. It even got so bad at one point that the captain of the Gustloff had to pull the ship away from the dock and he wanted them to load the Gustloff with small tender boats in order to try to control the flow of people. But even with all of these factors and all these things that they tried to do to control the flow of people, 
Still, over 10,000 people ended up on board the Guslav when it set sail, and there were still thousands of people left behind in Poland, and they'd have to wait for other ships to be rescued. Another really important thing that you need to understand in order to fully comprehend the Guslav sinking is due to the unusual circumstances of the voyage of the Guslav and how many people were on board, the Guslav had ended up with four captains on board. Now, I only, now, what I mean by that is there was only one real captain. His name was Captain Peterson. But there were three other men on board who were captains of various other ships around the German fleet, and they were all used to giving orders. So these three men presented a challenge to Captain Peterson's authority, which would later be a major role in what eventually caused the Gustloff to sink. So these three, or I'm sorry, these four men are in conflict with each other on what the proper course of action is. Now, one of the men had ordered the, the ship's passengers to have life jackets on at all times. However, due to how crowded and cramped the ship was, people weren't listening to it. They were taking their life jackets off, they weren't doing it, because you gotta think, all these people crammed inside a ship, it's really hot and stuffy in there, and with life jackets on, it's even worse. And no one could be outside the ship either, because outside, the conditions were rapidly deteriorating. A fog was moving in, and it was beginning to snow. So it was very, very cold outside. So most of the passengers did not have their life jackets on, even though they were ordered to not take them off under any circumstances. The evening after the Gustloff had set sail, the captain became aware of some German minesweeper ships that were on the route the Gustloff was taking. So the captain ordered the Gustloff's navigation lights to be turned on. Now, with the fog, the Gustloff should have been pretty well hidden from Russian submarines. However, Peterson was afraid of a collision with these German warships, so he ordered the lights turned on, which made the Gustloff very, very easy to spot by a Soviet submarine that was patrolling the route the Gustloff was taking. Now, several of the other captains on board the Gustloff strongly disagreed with Pearson's decision to turn on the ship's navigation lights. They figured it would make it very, very easy for them to be spotted by a Russian submarine if they happened to be patrolling the area, which they were. However, Peterson was more concerned with the collision with those other ships. Now, I think it's possible that Peterson's judgment was compromised due to the fact that he felt like he had to challenge or prove his worth to these other men who thought that they all knew better. I think that might've been a reason why he decided to turn on the navigation lights because in my opinion, he shouldn't have done that. He should have left the lights off because a Russian submarine seems like it'd be a much bigger threat than actually having a collision with another ship, but that's my opinion. Anyway, a little bit later, the navigation lights on the Gustloff were switched off, but by then it was too late. They had already been spotted and a Russian submarine was about to fire on the Gustloff. Just after 9.16 p.m., a Russian submarine that had been following the Gustloff fired not one, not two, but three torpedoes at the ship. Now, all three of these torpedoes made contact with the ship and detonated like they were supposed to. And just after this, the Gustloff began to rapidly sink. All three torpedoes struck the Gustloff on the port side, so the ship immediately began to roll over in that direction, which meant that all the lifeboats on the starboard side could not be launched due to the heavy list. Now, with these three massive holes on the ship's port side, that meant that the ship was going to roll over. Now, I want you to think about this from people inside's perspective. One of the three torpedoes detonated at the Gustloff's engine room, so that meant the ship was plunged into total darkness almost immediately. It did have emergency generator lights, but they were very dim in comparison to the full lights that the ship should have had. And you got to also remember the Gustloff was designed for 2,000 people, not 10,000. So the stairways that give people access to the deck became bottlenecks and people were stuck. They could not get out of the ship. So you've got a ship that is rapidly listing and you've got 10,000 people that are frantically trying to get out. I mean, just think about how horrible of a situation that had to have been for the people who were there. To the people who did find their way up on deck, it was basically a nightmare waiting for them. Half the lifeboats on the ship could not be launched due to the heavy list, and with each passing second, the ship's list grew more and more heavy. And then the few lifeboats that were able to be launched, they found the davits were actually frozen due to the cold, the rain, the snow, and the harsh conditions. So that meant that it was even more work and it was even more difficult to launch the few lifeboats off the ship that could be launched. To make matters worse, several of the lifeboats that were being lowered away had major problems with the davits and the lines broke, spilling all the occupants of this lifeboat into the cold freezing sea as the ship was rapidly sinking. At just 40 minutes after the torpedo detonation, the entire ship was laying completely on her side, which meant no more lifeboats could be launched and anybody still stuck inside of the ship had no chance of getting out. And then at just one hour after the torpedo had detonated, the Gustloff made her final plunge and slipped beneath the surface.
After the Gustav had went down, only five lifeboats were successfully launched from the ship the proper way. There could have been more lifeboats that had fallen off the ship or got cut away, but only five were properly launched from the ship. And to everybody who was in the water, you got to remember the water was freezing and it wasn't the best conditions. It was a very, very rough night that night, a lot of waves. Anyway, the minesweeper ships that the Gustav's crew were so worried about, so they turned on the navigation lights, the German minesweeper warships, they were the first ships on the scene. Now, before they even finished rescuing people in the water, the minesweeper ships were worried about those submarines, so they began dropping depth charges. So now when these depth charges detonated, they ended up killing several more or several hundred more survivors from the Gustav in the water. I mean, seriously, can you imagine surviving this shipwreck, thinking you're about to be rescued, only to have your own rescuer drop a bomb and it end up killing you? In the years following the Gustav sinking, people wondered if the Russians had committed a war crime in the sinking of the Gustav. Now remember, we don't have an exact accurate count to how many people died on the ship, but it is estimated that around 9,400 people died. So just let that number sink in. 9,400 people died. And they think it was around 10,400, 10,500 were actually on the ship. Now the Gustav had no official markings as a civilian ship or hospital ship. Those are usually protected under war, un, under war rules and stuff like that. That's one big reason why the Lusitania sparked so much controversy when it sank was because it was a, it was a civilian ship. However, the Gustav was a Navy vessel. It was armed and it had no markings on it signifying that it was carrying a bunch of civilians and wasn't, and was innocent. So officially there was no huge court martial to the Russian submarine crew and it was determined that they did not commit a war crime due to the fact the ship was not marked as carrying civilians. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and learned something. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed learning about the worst and the most forgotten about shipwreck in maritime history. I mean, this shipwreck is very largely forgotten about. I don't even remember learning about it in school. This ship has almost disappeared from history with the exception of a few ship historians that actually know about it. Anyway, I hope I broadened your all's horizons and you all learned something and yeah, and now you all know the story of the Wilhelm Gustloff. Anyway, everybody, well, hey, please hit that like button if you like this video and please subscribe. And to everybody who's new here and everybody who's been with me for a while, thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate it. All right, everybody, well, hey, you all stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next one.